I so in the, in the last session if you remember I told you I'm gonna find out some some other new way to welcome you rather than say my usual hi how are you welcome back and this is your fourth session in this series so today I tried waving my hands hopefully that's uh, good enough for this session I, I promise to get more innovative uh, as this thing goes forward alright so in your last session you, you learned what a cash flow statement is. You know what are the different components of cash flow statement. You also know what role a cash flow statement plays in a company, uh, trying to bridge the gap between or reconcile the balance sheet and the income statement. You know all of that. And what you are going to do in this class, in this session rather, is to actually understand how to actually build a very basic cash flow statement and also understand some basic concept as what is a free cash flow and how analysis is done using a cash flow statement. That is what the focus of the session is going to be. So with that in mind, you probably remember uh, this sheet right here that we built from the last session where Domino's end cash in 2008 was 2.1 crores and then their cash balance in 2009 was 3 crores and then we said the purpose of a cash flow statement is to get from one cash balance to the other cash balance and to figure out what happened and there are three different things that could happen one is stuff that happens in the operations of a company that is you know making their products selling their products the second is stuff that happens in the investment activities of a company that is you know the company is investing in future growth like stores and uh, uh, you know interiors and the brand and things like that and uh, the finally the money that goes in and comes out of financing activities like the company borrows money it has to pay interest rates and all of that we said if we take the starting cash balance and compensate that number to all of these three buckets of activities we will get to the ending cash balance so we will see how to do it now we could attempt to do this with the real Domino's um, cash flow statement but that is going to take forever to complete because there is you know like 85 different transactions in that so what I've done is I've actually excuse me I've actually tried to snapshot it just for our purposes a very you know a small sample of customized a sample for our needs so what I have done is we have a cash flow statement here uh, this is your one line income statement you know we should we wish it was as simple as that but this income statement has only one line which is the bottom line of income statement net income in 2008 is 1 crore and in 2009 the net income is 1.3 crores now this is a mini balance sheet I've put together cash in 2008 is 2.1 crores that's the same number here cash in 2009 is 3 crores that's the same number here stores I'm, I'm just basically saying this company all their stores in 2008 was worth 0.5 crores which is 50 lakhs but in 2009 all their stores assets are worth 0.7 crores that's 70 lakhs so basically between 2008 and 2009 the company has spent an extra 20 lakhs which is the 50 lakhs plus the 20 lakhs they have invested that in hard assets stores and all of that and then I've also said let me make this clear um, accounts receivables essentially this is the amount of money others have to give the company essentially the company has sold the product but the company has not got cash uh, for that revenue yet revenue probably has been recognized but cash has not been obtained yet so in 2008 accounts receivable was 20 lakhs in 2009 it went up by another 20 lakhs to become 40 lakhs so we are going to see how to reconcile this two 2.1 crore cash balance to the three three crore cash balance and as we know the first place we start is the cash flow from operating activities and essentially uh, you know you could go through the income statement one by one but what is the bottom line after all your revenue and expenses that is your net income so you write down your sorry you write down your net income as cash flow from operating activities so what is the money from net income in 2009 1.3 crores so this is 1.3 crores of profit that the company gets so it's a positive number you write down 1.3 crores of money came into the company so uh, now can we just go to the investing investing activities no no before we do that let's double check the balance sheet to make sure if anything has changed in the operations of the company um, 
cash is cash. We have already accounted for the cash here. Um, stores. What has happened here? The company has invested in stores. Now, is this an operating activity? Well, you could argue, well, it's stores. It's only because of the stores that customers can come and pizzas are made and customers can eat the pizza. But, you know, investment in a store is for a long-term activity. It's for that year and for the, probably the next five, seven years, the store has been, in, they're investing money. So, <clears throat> Investment in, ca in capital, capital goods. It's generally called, you know, capital expenditure, and that is actually an investing activity because the benefits of that happen over a period of time. So, in stores, what has what has happened here? End of two thousand eight, all your stores were worth fifty lakhs, but in two thousand nine, the value of the stores went up to seventy lakhs. So, if the value of the stores went up. By 20 lakhs, that means cash went down by 20 lakhs, right? Meaning, if stores had to go up by 20 lakhs, the value of your stores, where did you get the money to fund the stores? You use the money from your cash. So, this is a negative number. So, you have to subtract 20 lakhs from this two crores uh, because that money was spent trying to um, build new stores. And then what do we have left here? We have something called accounts receivable. Now, accounts receivable is essentially cash that somebody has to pay you. Okay, it's possible that you've, you've given them the product, you've probably even recognized part of the revenue. So this net income probably actually includes the revenue that is attributed to the accounts receivable, but you have not got the cash yet. This is hopeful. So if, if you had, so if, if you had not recognized the revenue, your net income would actually have been uh, 20 lakhs uh, lower. But since you actually took the whole net income in, and this is money you've not got, which is 20 lakhs, this account has gone up from 20 lakhs to 40 lakhs. So your accounts receivable went up by 20 lakhs. So that is a uh, that is a cash flow from operations because your accounts receivable always have to do with your revenue. Your revenue is an operating activity. So your accounts receivable is a negative 20 lakhs. Now is that it? Have we covered anything? Yeah, sure. We have a column here saying financing activity, but based on this income statement, there is no loan or anything. And this, sorry, this balance sheet does not have a loan and neither does this income statement have an interest expense or anything of that kind. So there is no cash flow from financing activities. So now let us see if this 2.1 crores, if, if all these if all these cash flows reconcile this 2.1 crores to our 3 crores. All right, let's, let's see that. If I say sum of, sorry, if I say sum of all this, ideally this should be 3 crores. It is 3 crores, right? So you see 2.1 crores plus 1.3 crores, that is uh, 3.4 crores. You subtract 2 crores there, that's 3.2 crores. Then you subtract another 2 crores there, that's a 3 crore. And that is your ending balance of 2009. And that is your simple cash flow statement. Now, uh, I know one you know key way to you know think about here we this is a, essentially a summary of the last seven or eight sessions that you have gone through. Uh, you have the income statement right here. You have the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. You know uh, uh, you, you probably are already thinking of this in these terms, but to actually put some uh, you know terms to uh, these statements, an income statement you, you, is actually tells you the Profit, profitability of a company. Yeah, you agree? The income statement tells you the profitability of a company. How profitable is this company? Uh, are, are, are they, uh, uh, you know, making a loss? Are they making a profit? An income statement gives you the profitability of a company. Whereas, the cash flow statement gives you the liquidity of a company. What that means is, if somebody asks you, are you liquid? Is that a liquid asset? That means, do you have sufficient cash? I don't care if you own like two flats somewhere, but do you have sufficient cash? That's liquidity. So a cash flow statement tells you how liquid a company is. And the balance sheet, you know, uh, I mean, there's a couple of ways to think about it. Maybe, but one, you know, straightforward way to think about it is, I don't even know if this is a proper word, but I'm just going to say the balance sheet basically will give you an idea. Is this company financeable? Yeah. 
what that basically means is by looking at a balance sheet, uh, an investor can make a by looking at a balance sheet, an investor can make a decision if this company to grow does it need to raise money using equity or debt? Does it have the capacity to raise more money? So a balance sheet can be um, you know tells you the the financeability the finance let's call it financeability of a company. Once again, the income statement basically tells you how efficiently the company is run is it profitably run the cash flow statement tells you how liquid the cash is how the company is how the cash is being spent and finally the balance sheet tells you um, uh, is the company financeable okay that is assuming assuming the company is low on cash and you want to increase uh, revenue if you want to borrow money can you actually do it with this balance sheet and that's how these three statements come together side by side now there are a couple of um, ways uh, to kind of analytically interpret this um, um, cash flow statement and one very important metric uh, you know the, the the final metric here this is this is actually you could you could sorry uh, Sorry about that. Okay. So, okay, I'm gonna close this thing right here. Okay. So this number together, right? This 1.3 crores minus the 20 lakhs, which is 1.1 crore. That is actually you could call it this whole thing put together. I'm actually gonna remove our income statement from here because we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to say this two numbers put together is typically called cash flow from operations. You probably heard this word. This is this the the, the net of this whole uh, category is called cash flow from operations. Now there is another word you probably heard of called free cash flow. You know people say is this company cash flow positive? Is this company cash flow negative? This is kind of what they're talking about. Free cash flow is a very, very important metric that investors look for, especially debt investors, especially banks. When banks are lending a company money, this is the metric they are most uh, uh, you know, focused on. So free cash flow is really nothing but your operating cash flow minus your capex capex is nothing but capital expenditure essentially what this means is your operating cash flow which is nothing but your cash flow from operations that is the net of these two numbers that number the amount of money that you have left over after the operations of the company finally from that you subtract the money that you you're investing in capex uh, that is you know uh, building your stores buying your equipment and all that you subtract that you you get what is roughly a recurring free cash flow of a company that is the amount of money that the company is throwing out every year that can be used for many things it could be used for investing activities it could be used for financing activities and all that and the reason investors are focused on the number is because this is the number that tells a, a bank that if I give this company 10 crores in money does this company have enough operating cash if, if the bank gives you 10 crores in money that is going to show up here as a financing activity this free cash flow number helps the banker determine if the company is throwing out enough cash to pay back his or her interest and the principal amount that's why this number is really really important um, Look, look at this a lot. Another metric that you know people uh, typically look at here is basically operating cash flow over sales. Operating cash flow over sales. And, and, and the reason this metric is important is you see what this does. It basically takes your operating cash flow which is in this case 1.1 crores. 1.1 crores and of that you 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 know, you divide that by your sales. Let's say your sales was five crores. Okay, your sales was five crores. So this number essentially tells you what percentage of your sales for every rupee in sales, how much cash is the company getting finally? Okay, twenty-two percent. It says for every rupee of cash, you get twenty-two paisa as cash flow cash that can be used for future growth or paying back loans or uh, you know well 
paying back the principal of the loans because the interest is already paid as part of the income statement. Uh, that is why this metric is quite popular. So I'm going to highlight these two metrics here, operating cash flow over sales, cash flow from operations, and your free cash flow. Three very, very important ways to uh, judge a company by using its uh, cash flow statement. So right now, at the end of this session, you have a very, very good understanding of the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statements of a company. You know what they're about, you know why they are used, you know how to build one, one of these things, uh, and, and, and all of that. Now, in the next couple of sessions, what we are going to do is, you know, there are a couple of special cases in the balance sheet and the cash flow statement, things like depreciation, amortization, uh, interest, taxes, which we have looked at pedifully in passing when we've actually went through these sessions. But in the next couple of sessions, we will do a slightly deep dive into it to understand a little more better. And, you know, finally, about two sessions from now, we will actually try to build a three statement model. We'll take a sample company and we'll build out its income sheet, balance sheet, and uh, its cash flow statement. So uh, I will, um, you know, look forward to seeing you at all those sessions. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. Have a good day. Bye.